Hello everyone, this is Professor McKay for Physical Geography, Chapter 2. I <clears throat> uh, hope this image is coming out okay. If not, you know, of course, you download these PowerPoints yourself and uh, you could read through as you watch this, uh, this recording. Again, I'm no expert as far as uh, videotape or uh, making recordings, so excuse me if uh, there's any problems or... But I'm going to do my best. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, these videos are not required. They're just completely extra. Uh, sometimes, you know, students need to hear uh, about these concepts and words and terms and uh, how they uh, work. And so just a little bit of a help there. <clears throat> All right. Coral Magnon cave paintings in France quite a few thousand years ago. Um, so earlier we talked about mental maps on chapter one. And conceptual maps, <clears throat> well, technically, this is a map because this is a drawing and it actually goes far beyond this little part here. But it's actually uh, kind of a pictogram of uh, where hunting is, what kind of animals can you find, what are the distances, uh, where do you go. Um, <clears throat> so it's a very, very uh, simple map. All right, so cartography, you might hear the term cartography. Uh, it's actually the field of cartography, which is map making, <clears throat> has been largely replaced by GIS, Geographic Information Systems. I actually teach GIS here at Century, so if you want to learn more about GIS, uh, you know, let me know. <coughs> so the Earth itself is not a perfect sphere. It is an oblate spheroid, meaning basically a squished sphere, all right, meaning it bulges around the equator, but only slightly. So if you're going to divide up the Earth um, in order to create a coordinate system, which, you know, we have, um, <clears throat> there are a number of ways you can break it up. You can break it up by great circles. A great circle is when you could split the Earth into two equal halves. Uh, and this could be in any kind of way um, as long as there are two equal halves. So you could split it down the equator. Um, well, you know, all kinds of ways you could slice and dice the Earth to break it up into two even halves. Um, a small circle is anything smaller than a great circle, all right? And so basically, when you're looking at lines of latitude, which are parallel lines, right, that start at the equator and move up and down, compared to uh, lines of longitude, which are meridians, which means they all converge at the North Pole, and right? you see how these lines are different? Uh, this, is the <clears throat> this is the system, uh, the geometry, of how we find geography, all right? Coordinate systems for... Uh, well, you know, it used to just be uh, planes, trains, and automobiles, but now people have GPS and all kinds of um, <clears throat> gadgets that, that they have, so uh, it's becoming more and more common to use coordinate systems. Uh, so here's a slide that you can look at uh, some coordinate systems and see, well, you know, what degree this way, what degree that way, are these different places? It's a pretty easy system. <clears throat> and you may notice that a uh, coordinate system is kind of similar to uh, international date lines and time zones. Um, the reason for this is because, well, you know, these are lined up by the time of day, right? Of uh, when you have your sunrise and your sunset. Now you notice that these are not straight lines, uh, unlike the meridians, which go straight up and down. And again, they'll meet at the North and South Pole. <clears throat> the reason these are so jagged is because there's quite a few nations, such as China, as you can see there, where they want the entire place to be in one time zone. There's also lots of groups of nations, for example, Central Europe, where they all kind of, you know, want to be in one combined time zone, uh, just kind of make things easier for keeping tra track of uh, shipping dates and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, public land survey system. You know, this is an interesting topic if you're ever looking at uh, reviewing property lines, if you're ever buying property. If not, eh, you know, it's kind of good to know. <clears throat> The uh, main thing I want you to get from this is that the magnetic north and uh, the north as far as where we've marked on the North Pole are slightly different places. Because uh, remember, the magnetic north, that's determined by the uh, spinning uh, molten core um, that we have in the center of our planet. Whereas uh, the North Pole that we have on our maps, well, that's basically a grid system, and that's where, uh, you know, these are just slightly different. So there's all kinds of different projections that maps are used for. Um, now, if you look at these 
the examples where they have a globe and they have um, maps that are wrapped around in these different ways. Basically, picture these globes with a light bulb inside and the shadow of the continents and the oceans that would go on those pieces of paper that are folded around them in different ways, that's how those projections, so think of projection as in that's how it's projected from inside the earth. Um, so, you know, this is why different maps have different projections because uh, just the different ways they're done. And because you can never have a perfect projection because you can't uh, really show a true uh, spheroid like the Earth on a flat piece of paper without having some uh, inconsistencies and uh, imperfections. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so some more projections. Now the Peters projection on the upper right here is uh, becoming much more popular these days. It is an equal area projection, which means that um, the size of the continents and the nations are all correct. Whereas in other projections, uh, they may squish some places and stretch out some. So the Mercator projection on the upper left, you'll see that very tops and bottoms are very, very much stretched out beyond w what their actual size is. I mean, you know, Greenland looks like it's bigger than Africa, which is crazy. Um, so basically, the further away from the equator, the more stretched out things are in that projection. Uh, whereas the Peters, I mean, that shows you how big these places really are. And if you look at Africa compared to Greenland and that one, I mean, you know, Africa is a huge place. Oh, here's a better uh, depiction of the equal area. And again, it shows you uh, the true size of places like uh, South America and Africa compared to uh, the rest of the world. Uh, Europe is, is, when you look at, you know, the true areas, Europe is quite a bit smaller than uh, you would think. <coughs> So when you're looking at maps, map legend is a very important thing because that's going to tell you um, the distances. You know, you're going to look at the representative fraction, which is the scale. You usually say something like one inch equals however miles, something like that. Most of you have used maps, um, so you kind of know about this already. If not, give it a read. So what kind of variables, what kind of data do we use in geography? Well, in a nutshell, use continuous variables and discrete variables. Uh, they're very easy to remember the differences. Discrete variables are basically this is here, that's there. It's like boom, boom, boom. Um, whereas continuous variables have the same value for that entire line of, uh, of variables. So the easiest example to think of is temperatures. You know, you'll see temperature maps and they'll say 70 degrees and there'll be a line where all along that line it's 70 degrees. Um, there's lots of other examples, let's say uh, altitudes, for example. Um, sometimes if you're going hiking, you'll look at a map and it'll have circles on them showing you if you're going up or down. That's continuous variable. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, and there's a good example here. It's a large-scale map. Um, now, when you look at large-scale map and a small-scale map, uh, just remember that a small-scale map will show an actual larger area, just smaller. All right, make sure you don't get that confused with large-scale map. <clears throat> so when we're talking about those lines um, showing the altitude, showing the gradient as you're going up or down a hill, um, this is a good example of the same geographic area shown in two depictions. As you can see, when these lines are closer and closer together, that means that's a steeper area, all right? You have a steep gradient. Uh, another interesting thing is if you look at uh, you know, the blue lines, that's a waterway. If you're ever looking at a map and you want to know where water is coming from, uh, you look at those uh, lines, those contour lines, they're kind of like arrows and they point toward the source of the water. <clears throat> you could read all this stuff on your own. Basically just going over the same stuff. Uh, so GIS, there's a little bit down here. Um, like I said, I teach GIS, so if you ever want to know more. Um, great thing about GIS is you could uh, put a bunch of layers on top of each other and do some really good analysis of uh, different factors. <coughs> so pixels, well, a lot of maps, especially today, they're digital, so they're made of pixels. Each pixel is a little area of resolution. Um, so if you're notice you zoom up on photos, they'll become all kind of Look like big blocks. It looks like I'm running out of time here, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up. The rest of this you could read about. Um, 
and I'll look forward to talking to y'all on the discussion section.